If you have a child who does not like to read, boy, do I have the author for you. I'm about to sit down with Mr. Dan Gutman, author of My Weird School and the Baseball Card Adventures and so many more. Get your paper, get your pencil, and join us. That's coming up next on Books Alive. Thank you so much for joining us and we're so glad that you're here today. Let me tell you, if you're the parent of kids who don't like to read, I have such a treat for you today. And even if your kids love to read, when I say the name, a lot of them are already going to know this guy. So take a minute, run and get your paper and pencil because you're going to want to write these down. This is an answer to a prayer. I am joined in the studio today with the one and only Mr. Dan Gutman. Welcome. Thank you, Barb. Thanks for having me. It's really great to have you here. Now, why am I so crazy about this guy? Why? Well, yes, why? Why? <laughs> why? Let me tell you why I'm groveling here. Yes, please. Okay. Um, he writes, he gets it. He gets what these kids are all about. And he has written for second grade way on up. And he, he understands something that they're looking for. If you had to define what it is you're trying to write and who you're writing for, could you do that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I write for everybody. You okay. Know? Uh, I, I have like picture books for kindergarten kids and uh, easy readers for kids who are just starting to read mm -hmm. and like middle grade novels mm -hmm. for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And uh, what can I tell you, Barb? I have the brain of a 10 year old. It's easy <laughs> to relate to kids when your, your brain is, I never matured past that point. <laughs> Does your wife agree with that idea? She that would be the first person to say, say that, yes. that, and my children as well. <laughs> well, that must make you a very fun dad. <laughs> well, n nobody thinks their dad is cool. Oh. You know, they just kind of take your dad for take your dad for granted. Yes. But um, I'd like to think that on some level, my kids maybe think I'm a little a little cool and not completely dorky. Oh. But eh, you never know. Yeah. Well, I think you've done pretty well on that count. Now. We'll come back to who it is you're writing for and how you are able to be so successful about this. But I want to begin with your how you started your writing career. Okay. Because you have a degree in psychology, psychology. <laughs> and not a degree in writing at all. No, I never took a writing class in my life. Okay. So how did you get into the writing thing? I uh, I went to college. I went to Rutgers University. Mm -hmm. uh, majored in psychology. I uh, even went to graduate school for two years in psychology. Wow. And then I decided I'm not going to be a psychologist. <laughs> yeah. This is not for me. Uh huh. And I just kind of thought like you know well what do I like to do and. I always enjoyed writing letters to my friends, oh so I just gosh. decided to start writing. And in the beginning, uh, I never thought of writing for kids. I, I thought that I was going to write uh, like short, humorous essays, sort of like Art Buckwald used to do and oh. Irma Bombeck back in the old days. Mm -hmm. You know, loved them. Tried to do that, failed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> tried to uh, write magazine articles, uh -huh. failed. Uh huh. Tried to write screenplays, ne failed. Oh. Tried to write uh, books for adults. Failed. Oh. Nothing. Nothing worked for me. Wow. Until How long did that take? About 15 years. Whoa. Or so. How'd you support yourself while you were trying this? All these different things. Well, the, I wasn't really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing is that when, like, before you, you know, before you're married and have kids and you have a house and everything, mm -hmm. you don't have to make a lot of money. Mm. You know. So I didn't make a lot of money. I didn't mm -hmm. need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of trying all different things, different avenues, and just kind of hitting a lot of brick walls. You mm -hmm. know. And nothing was working. And then my son was born, Sam. And I started, this is 1990. Hmm. And I started reading a lot of children's books, you know, for the first time since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I thought, uh, let's, nothing else has worked. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> let's try writing for kids. <laughs> and as soon as I started writing for kids, I felt, this is what I'm good at. Wow. And so I, I had some minor success doing that. Mm -hmm. And I stopped writing for grown-ups. And 
Well, that wasn't the minor success, really. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is a major success? No, no, that oh, wasn't no. a success oh, at all. No. Oh, no. No, I had a minor success with a book called The Kid Who Ran for President. Oh, yeah. About a kid who yes. runs for president. Here, I've oh. got it on, as a, a book on CD. Yes. The Kid Who Ran for President. Yes. How fun. What year was this? This was 1996. It came, I got the idea when Bob Dole was running for president. Okay. And a lot of people were saying that he was too old to be president. Yeah. Know? And I thought, if somebody could be too old to be president, right. what would be too young to be president? Mm -hmm. A kid. Mm -hmm. So I got the idea for the kid who ran for president. Oh, that's great. My wife thought it was a lousy idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then? And I, I wrote it in a month. It was like really fast. I just wrote it for laughs. Whoa, you know? yeah. And uh, Scholastic, who was the publisher, mm -hmm. got it out just in time for the 1996 presidential elections. Oh, how perfect. And they sold like hundreds of thousands of copies. Wow. And not only that, but like even though I just wrote it for laughs, uh -huh. schools all over the country started using it to teach <gasps> a government, you know, oh, how man. constitutional amendments are passed yeah. and how the Electoral College yes. works. So they used it in their curriculum. and. It got me thinking that maybe I should oh. try and slip other information ah. into my books uh -huh. that teachers could use mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. Well, that was brilliant. And this is the kid who became <clears throat> president. So after he ran, yes. and then he, he uh, had a wonderful campaign, and then he succeeded, and then he gets himself into some sticky situations there. Yes, yes. Yeah, so those are awesome. My okay. characters always get into sticky situations. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> they do. Now, following those... Um, would Virtually Perfect come in there after that? Around that time, I, I okay. started writing. I, I got the idea in my head that I like to take an ordinary kid, mm -hmm. like the kid in The Kid Who Ran for President, mm -hmm. and put the kid into an extraordinary situation. Yes. You know, a kid uh, finds the most valuable baseball card in the world. A kid gets the chance to take one foul shot in the middle of the NBA Finals mm -hmm. for a million dollars, you know. And Here's I think, the million dollar shot. Yes. That's the guy that gets to take the shot. Exactly. Yes, that's and awesome. I think kids like to fantasize about themselves in these s situations that mm -hmm. could never really happen in the real world. Mm -hmm. And I started just writing these stories. Virtually Perfect is another one where yeah. this kid creates on a computer screen yes. sort of a three-dimensional simulated kid. Yeah. And he gives the kid <laughs> so much intelligence, uh -huh. it figures out how to come through the screen to exist in the real world like a real kid. Mm -hmm. So each of these books, they're all mm -hmm. on different subjects, but the similarity is that it's an ordinary kid in an extraordinary situation. Mm -hmm. You know, when they had to take the philosophy out of the file that yes. made this kid, yes. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. He lost his conscience. Something bad is going to happen. Yes, It's good to have so. bad things happen to your characters because then yes. you have to find a way to <laughs> yeah, get right, them around right. the obstacle. So this is know. Victor the Vactor, right? Yes. Yes, a Vactor. We all need one. And I thought it was great how the sister really cozied up to him. I mean, she was, all the women in the book were sort of desperate for um, appreciation, I must say. Well, I, tr <laughs> I try to, uh, like most of my books, the main character is a guy, because I'm a guy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. right. But a lot of gir girls are the big readers, and I like ah. to have at least one strong female character in uh -huh. all my books. Uh -huh. I have one book where the main character is a girl. It's uh, The Million Dollar Kick, oh. which is a soccer book. Okay. But usually the, the main character is a guy. All right. Now, speaking of having a woman as a character, Mickey and me, <coughs> when I picked yeah. that up, I was so thinking number seven, yeah. Mickey Mantle. Yeah, me too. And, oh, <laughs> is that how you started? <laughs> well, yeah, the idea was a lot of kids had been, had been bugging me with the Baseball Card Adventure series. Uh -huh. You've got to do Mickey Mantle. Uh huh. And I didn't really have a great story to tell oh. about Mickey Mantle. I don't pick these guys because they were good people or great mm -hmm. players or mm -hmm. they played for a special team. Mm -hmm. I pick them because I can build a really interesting story mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a Mickey Mantle story to tell, mm -hmm. but this woman, Mickey McGuire, who played for the Milwaukee Chicks in the female league during the 1940s, uh -huh. she had a really compelling story to tell. Well, how did so you I, know that story? I was just reading books about... Uh, Ah, you know, the no. All-American Girls Baseball League from the oh. 1940s. Huh. And that movie, A League of Their Own, yes. you know. Yes, yes. It's launched a fascinating you. time yeah. period. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, let's sort of orient people about your baseball card adventures, because not everybody's found them. Yeah. And I think some people that are sitting out there are thinking, baseball, my son, my daughter doesn't want to read about baseball. But it's so not that. So let's, if we can, yeah. um, let's grab, how about we grab the newest one? I've got Ray here. Oh, the newest one. Oh, yes. great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Ray the, and me. The thing is with this series, 
I knew that a lot of kids collect baseball cards, mm -hmm. and I knew that a lot of kids are fascinated by time travel stories. So I thought, let's see if I could put together baseball cards in time travel. And I thought, yeah, I'll have a kid who has the power to travel through time using a baseball card like a time machine. It's and fabulous. He goes on all these adventures with these different ball players, and this is the newest one. It's actually a very sad story mm -hmm. because Ray Chapman, most people don't know that name, but Ray Chapman, he was the only player in baseball history to be hit by a pitched ball and die. Mm -hmm. It happened in 1920 before they had batting helmets. Mm. So I sent my kid back to 1920 to try and save Ray Chapman's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I picked him because it's a, such a compelling story to tell. The next one, actually, is mm -hmm. going to be about Roberto Clemente. Ooh. And uh, that oh. one will be coming out next year. Oh, wow. And well. in that one, the, as you probably know, Clemente died tragically also mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. plane crash. Right. So the kid is going to try and prevent Clemente from getting on oh, a plane. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I was fascinated to read through these. In Ray and Me, you're really teaching people about the brain and what they could have done if they had known what we know now yeah. about the brain back then because he could have been saved his life could have been saved yes and so as a reader you're learning all about the hema or you know something like that <laughs> and uh, not good with the words here <laughs> but anyway it was um, actually a similar story to what happened with natasha richardson just recently oh no when she she died the uh, in a ski accident, accident. Yeah. In both cases, there was like a severe head trauma, uh -huh. and when there's a severe head trauma, and I, I know this from consulting with brain surgeons, yeah. Barb, I didn't just know this stuff, right, right. but the brain swells okay. when it, there's a head trauma, yeah. and it needs room to grow, and the skull prevents it from growing, you know? Oh. So if they had acted quickly on Chapman, mm -hmm. quickly on Richardson, they could have saved both of their lives. Oh, my goodness. But in 1920, they didn't know that. Right. And when it happened to her, she uh -huh. was not aware that she was severely hurt oh until my. it was too late. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, let's look at Abner for a minute because this was fascinating. I knew because my husband's a big Civil War buff. Okay. So I'd already been filled in on this. Yes. But it's really cool when you're reading this, and he time travels with his mom this time. Yes. And they, when they land, it's like, Poo, 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 all over the place. The Battle of Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg. Yes. And you're like, why? <laughs> well, most people know the, the, the story that Abner Doubleday invented baseball in Cooperstown, New York mm -hmm. in 1839, I believe. Okay. Well, it's, it's a myth. It's a total fabrication. Wow. He, he didn't invent baseball at all. Oh, my gosh. And, and we, know, we know this now? We know this. It's, oh, it's geez. Proven I'm, I'm upset I'm now. I'm sorry to yes. burst okay, your bubble. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's the truth. And so I wanted my kid to go back in time to try and meet Doubleday himself and see if he really invented mm -hmm, baseball. Mm -hmm. So Doubleday, while he was not a baseball player, he never mentioned baseball in his whole life. He mm -hmm. wrote three books after his Civil War days were over, never mentioned baseball. Hmm. But he was a very significant Civil War general mm -hmm. in Gettysburg. He also aimed the first gun at, uh, it within Fort Sumter, which started the Civil War. Oh, my goodness. So he's a very significant historical yeah. figure. Yeah. So it gave me the chance to teach a little bit about the Civil War mm -hmm. while telling a baseball story. Mm -hmm. And that's the cool thing. I mean, what I see in the library is that when a young person comes in, and it's often a guy, and he gets one of these, he comes back and goes through them like it's a bag of potato chips, you know? I mean, it's like, well, does he have another one? <laughs> and uh, one of the librarians I work with, Mrs. Wong, was like, you ask him if he's going to write another one of these because she's got characters she wants you to, oh. to fill in on. But I told her about Ray, so she's very excited okay. to get her hands on that one. Well, Ray and Me is the ninth book in the series. Wow. And I take about a year to write each one so they don't come out quickly like, <laughs> you know, other series come out every month, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you've got Satch and me. I don't have Mickey and me out here. I don't have Shoeless Joe yeah. out here. Um, Jim and me. Yeah, we Jim Thorpe. Do. Yes. Jim Thorpe. And that's when the enemy boy, Bobby Fuller, asked yes. him to go back. The kid he does not get along with. These, these two have hated each other for a few books now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I would say with good reason. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, Bobby Fuller is like a psychopath, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the age of what? Uh, 12? 12, 12, 13. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Right. But, you know, most people don't even realize that Jim Thorpe played baseball. Hmm. He, uh, most people, well, a lot of people know that he won two gold medals in the 1912 Olympics. That would be He neat. was the greatest athlete in the world wow. uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was his medals from the Olympics 
were taken away from him mm -hmm. because they found out that he played some professional baseball before <sighs> the Olympics. And wow. back in those days, uh -huh. professionals were not allowed oh, in the Olympics. Oh, that's right, that's right. So in this case, I tried to have the kid go back in time to try and help restore Jim yeah. Thorpe's reputation. Oh, gee. As it turned out, Jim Thorpe played six years of Major League Baseball for the New York Giants. Wow. Because back in those days, that's the only sport you could play. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, you could play to make money. Right. For a professional athlete. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, now I wanted to get one of my hair. Oh, what? One of the Cordy Stevens, oh. Stuck in Time. Okay. Because it's still the historical time travel. Yeah. Now, yeah. I've got Edison somewhere here, but we didn't yes. have room on the table. Yeah. Here's Benjamin Franklin. Is there yeah. anybody else? No, that's all. I okay. wanted to do a third one uh -huh. uh, about Lewis and Clark, actually. Oh, cool. But uh, the publisher wouldn't go for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, here again, I mean, in each one of the books that we've talked about so far, you've got a virtual friend. Yeah. You've got a kid making a million-dollar shot. You've yeah. got a kid running for president. You've got the kid doing time travel where you're actually learning something about history or science or something. Hopefully the kids and don't realize they're learning anything. Truly, it. truly. It's a you slip that into uh, the surface. You have there. it so disguised. <laughs> I, I'm, I can support you on that 100%. You know what I loved about this? What? That he takes air baths. <laughs> Who knew? I didn't make that up. Who knew? Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin took air baths. But the, Explain. The viewers don't know what that means. No. You must fill us okay. in. Okay. Well, I, I did a lot of research about Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> okay. I read all the you know major adult biographies of him. Uh huh. And a few of them mentioned that he used to basically sit around with no clothes on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Taking an air bath. And he called it an air bath. Yeah. And, and, this was supposed to be very revolutionary at the time because a lot of people felt that like the air was bad for you. Oh. You know, you shouldn't go outside, you shouldn't ever be without clothes on and be covered up all the time. Uh -huh. So he huh. would sit around with no clothes on and it was such a oh. compelling image. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I thought it could be used to, for shock value. In <laughs> yeah, the book. yeah, yeah. It was great. It shocked the heck out of me as, as, as it did that lady that meets him toward, yes. toward the end, when yes. the teacher that goes. Yes. But the, the fun thing about this is that when you meet young Cordy here, yes. he, and those are what the top letters in the keyboard, right? On the, on the computer keyboard, uh -huh. the top left hand row uh -huh. spells out Cordy. Cordy. I right. always noticed that that was the only letters on the keyboard that looked like it spelled a word. A word. You know? I've never noticed so that. I've we'll we'll to all that. look at our keyboard in a whole new light now. Okay. All right. So he sits there and he's forgotten to do his report on the American Revolution. Yeah. So he starts going to the computer and pulling in a few photos and found some text and he's got a nine page report that Bingo. looks fabulous. <laughs> right, right. And then he time travels yes. back to the Liberty Bell or no, to the signing, the signing of the declaration. Uh, was that no, it? Th this was the, the the signing and the writing of yes. the declaration. Yes. And I live ten miles from Philadelphia. Oh. So I could go check these things out, Benjamin Franklin's house and yeah. and the, the, the building where Jefferson wrote the declaration and of course Constitutional Hall where where the uh, the delegates got together and signed it. Mm -hmm. um, and this, by the way, this is a sequel to the book about Thomas Edison, ah. who was a hero of mine growing up. Oh. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey, just uh -huh. a few miles from his laboratory in uh -huh. West Orange, New Jersey. Okay. So I always wanted to write about Edison, and um, this was the sequel to that one. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. All right, well, we've got so many more of your newer books, and especially that My Weird School series to talk about. Okay. We're going to take a short break. All right. When we come back, we're going to pick up with some of his fabulous new books. Stay with us. In the event of a car crash, three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor, tether, latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Illustrators, too. Yes, and musicians.
Welcome back. And if you weren't with us for the first half, I'm joined in the studio today by the one and only Mr. Dan Gutman. And if your kids haven't found his books yet, let me tell you what we have here. We have here a man who writes for kids who are not readers, who are maybe what we call reluctant readers, and especially those boys, but the girls love him too. And we've gone through some of his baseball card adventure books and some of his early works, and we're about to turn to some of um, the, the newer ones. Now, I'm going to grab two that I have, have read are your favorites. Okay. Okay? And I'm going to start with Race for the Sky, because this was a really cool way to look at Wilbur and Orville Wright. Yes, and it came out on the 100th anniversary of the first flight in 2003. Oh, how fun. Yeah. I, I got the idea for the book because the Wright brothers are also heroes of mine, and I was just reading a book about them, and it said that there were five witnesses to the first flight, mm -hmm. and that one of them was a kid. So I thought, Bingo! I'll yeah. tell the story of the Wright brothers through this kid's eyes. Yes. And it just so happened that he was sort of a semi-illiterate uh, North Carolina fisherman. Oh, you know? wow. So I kind of did a dialect and everything. Oh, and yes. It was really fun. Yes. That book, uh, unfortunately, has not been successful. Huh. So I hope all the viewers will check it out. Well, you know, it's cool because of the way, because it is a diary, it's divided yeah. up into little sections because, you know, here's September 8th, here's September 15th. Yeah. And so it's not a whole lot of information in each chunk. Right. And I would think that would be great for kids that don't want to have to stay with the flow or something, you I, know? I do that a lot in my books. And the, mm -hmm. the same thing you were going to mention, the homework machine. Yeah, let's grab also, it. Also, I try and break the text up so that it's not... 5,000 uninterrupted words of type. Right. Because that's what turns reluctant readers off. Mm -hmm. They've got to have a rest. They've got to have bite-sized chunks so they can feel a feeling of accomplishment, you mm. know? So that's what I did in this one. I took the four characters, mm -hmm. and I, I, I almost wrote it like a play, Barb. I, mm. I put each character's speech in, you know, one block, then mm -hmm. the other person talks, the other person talks. Mm -hmm. Because when I read a book frequently, I get the characters confused myself. Me too. And I know a lot of kids do as well. So that's why I wrote that book in that format. Mm -hmm. It's about, obviously, a kid who invents a machine <laughs> that does your homework for you automatically. Mm -hmm. A common fantasy amongst children. <laughs> <laughs> and you were telling me when we were off camera yes. that a sequel's coming out. Yes. It was so successful, they asked for another one. Oh, so, that's uh, awesome. And that's coming out in June? June, yes. Uh, the Return of the Homework the Machine. The Return. Okay. And this time, Bob, uh, yeah? one of the characters uh -huh. is going to die. No. Yes. No. I'm not telling you who. Oh no. You'll have to read the book. Oh, to find I'm out. crying already. <laughs> I loved them all. And you did a very cool thing here what? because you did a geek. Yeah. A teacher's pet. Yeah. A class clown and a slacker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And kids, when when I do book discussion groups and I've used this and I say those things. In their eyes, there's this instant recognition of who they know who is that character. Really? Oh, yeah. It's this universal thing. I hope it's not too stereotypical. Oh, my goodness. It's fantastic. Okay. And it, cre it creates great discussion because it's like you've gotten... You know how you said in one of the My Weird School books that your mother can't come to class unless she's bringing cupcakes <laughs> or something other like, like that. Yeah. Or you're going to get under the desk. Right. Um, it's the same thing. <laughs> we enter their world, you know, and, and when, when I said, you know, that's who's in there, it's like getting into their world and they like, they know we know, hmm. you know. We know what you're living. We know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. The other thing I thought was cool in here was the, um, is it right or is it wrong to have a homework machine? Oh. And the gray. Yeah. You know, I, I try, I don't try to teach like moral lessons in my books because mm -hmm. I think kids see that a mile away. <laughs> They've got radar. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you'll find a character in like a moral quandary. Yes. And it makes the story more interesting because there's conflict there. Mm -hmm. Like in, in the baseball card adventure books, the first one, he finds this uh, priceless baseball card in an old lady's attic mm -hmm. that she asked him to clean out. She mm -hmm. told him to throw all the stuff in the garbage. Oh. Then he finds the most valuable baseball card in the world. He's got to decide, do I have the right to keep this? Yeah. Can I sell it? Yeah. Must I give it back to the old lady? Yeah. And, and these are issues that the kid has to decide. And it's, I think it's good when the character has a situation mm -hmm. like that, because the reader can put themselves in the same situation and say, gee, what, what would I do if yes. I was in that situation? Yes. And then the whole class can have a big argument over oh, yeah. what's right to do. Absolutely. All right, your other favorite? Yes. As I understand. My absolute favorite. Your absolute Johnny Hangtime. Didn't sell. Oh. 
<laughs> I can't imagine why not, because he's a stunt kid. I know. Oh. He, you know, my, my son told me he thinks that book didn't sell because I should have called it The Stunt Kid. Ah. I shouldn't have called it Johnny Hank. Hang time. I said, to, I said to him, Sam, I said, yes. you know, when Mark Twain, uh, he didn't write uh, Sailing Down the Mississippi on a Raft. <laughs> yeah, right, he wrote right, Huckleberry right, Finn. Right, right. And uh, my son said, uh, you're not Mark Twain. <laughs> you should have called it The Stunt, Stunt Kid. Kid. Oh, no. But yeah, it's oh. a kid. He's always jumping out of windows and having himself set on fire and uh -huh, stuff like that. Uh -huh. It's very exciting. It's got action. It's got romance. It's oh, got yeah. comedy. Yeah. That didn't sell. Oh, what well, are you going to do? After being on this show, millions. Totally, <laughs> you're you're home. You can quit worrying. All right, that's All right. what I need. Mean. Now let me dig out. Um, well, getting air. Yes. Where is? Oh, also here it inspired is. by right my here. son. Was it? Yeah, he's All a right. skate. He was a former skateboarder. <laughs> okay. Now music is his life, but he was oh. a skateboarder for a number of years. All right. And uh, I was also inspired by Gary Paulson's wonderful book Hatchet. When I read this, I was like, this has got Hatchet right in it. Yeah. I thought, you've got skateboarding, you've got the survival. survival. Yes. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. So um, you want to set up for people who haven't read it, give them a sense of what we're doing here? Yeah. Well, it's uh, some kids, uh, four skateboarders, who are they're on a plane going uh, coast to coast, and their plane is taken over by hijackers. They fight back, they subdue the hijackers, mm -hmm. crash land the plane into the wilderness, and then they have to survive in the wilderness on their wits and what, what they know, mm -hmm. and the kid's sister more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is that true from your family? Would Emma help Sam? <laughs> Emma, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's like the Girl Scout in the family, and ah. Sam is the skateboarding, uh -huh. um, you know, uh -huh. heavy metal uh -huh. <laughs> listener. Question for you. Yes. Troubleshooting, though, problem solving, would Sam be good at that? Troubleshooting. And problem solving. Would he be a good problem solver with um, just who he is as a person? Yeah, I suppose so. Why? Okay. Why? I was just curious. Uh -huh. One of your characters was a problem solver. Was it Kip? I'm trying to remember. And I thought, I wonder if that's the same kind of personality. Yeah. Well, Whatever. You know, if, if my son inspired anybody, he inspired the kid in the homework machine named Sam, oh. who is also, my son's name is Sam, Yeah. Uh, who's kind of like a, um, I wouldn't say goth kid, but he's, you know, he's kind of a rebel. Yeah. You know, he's a good kid, but a rebel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, rebels are good people. Okay, now this one. I will never, ever, ever forget the search for the gold-plated knickknacks. <laughs> 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 if you all do not care for fantasy, <laughs> we have a chapter for you. He took all the genres and did parodies of them in this one book. Yes. But we have Nightmare at the Book Fair. This it's like came 12 out books in one. It is. <laughs> well, the neat thing is it's a buffet. Yes. And you can read each chapter and then say, well, that I don't like that, but I like this, <laughs> and get more of those. Yeah. Well, basically, um, my publisher suggested I do a book about a book fair. So I thought, how are you going to make a book fair, fair interesting? Yeah. I thought, okay, I'm going to have a, hit, a kid get bonked on the head by an encyclopedia, <laughs> knocked unconscious, <laughs> and every chapter he's like in the middle of caught in a different kind of children's book, a horror story, mm -hmm. a fantasy story, a historical fiction, and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fantasy fan, Barb, myself. I I'm gathered. Kind of made fun yeah. of fantasy yeah. books a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, girls fiction, easy readers. So it's like you go from one chapter to the other and you go from, from one book, one type of book to another. Mm -hmm. It was really fun to write. Mm -hmm. Very silly. In the first chapter, he's in that haunted house yeah. and that, that professor wants to take his face and do a face transplant on his assistant Igor because he failed or something. You really did read the book. I, I, I read them all. <laughs> but the cool thing was for me is as, as he's like grabbing his face, the next time you turn the page, He's catching a touchdown pass with Philadelphia Eagles. In the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like, whoa. I yeah. was like, wait a minute, what happened? you got to be able to turn on a dime when you read this stuff. Yeah, you really <laughs> do. This is so good. Okay, now this one just came out, I think. The yes, Recycle I, This Book. This I'm most Tell proud of. Tell me about this. Well, I've wanted to write a book about the environment for a long time. And all my publishers rejected me. No! <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to write fiction. I wanted to write a nonfiction book. Nobody was interested. And then I thought, I'm going to get together a hundred different children's book authors. How did you do that? It was a lot of detective work. Okay. Mostly like, you know, 
uh, going online, going to their websites, talking to everybody I knew. Okay. You know. Yeah. And I just asked each of these people to write me a page or two, something they do to save energy, reduce waste, or help the environment mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. And almost as a rule, everyone was, was glad to be part of it. Nobody asked for any money. We donated all wow. the money to environmental causes. Cool. And it came out just before Earth Day. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, it's Recycle This Book. A hundred top children's book authors tell you how to go green. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of big names in there, too, oh, yeah. whom you've had on this show. Yes. Uh, John Chesko was on. Yep. Uh, you don't have T.A. Barron in here, and he would have done a good one for you. I probably That's couldn't track him down. Me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's fabulous. I was reading through them today, and I really enjoyed it. Gail Carson Levine we've had here. She was in there. Yes, a lot so of people. This is really cool. Yeah. Okay, now. And really important, too. Very. We are going to now do the two that I think... That your younger readers know. Yes. But when they come in, I mean, they just go crazy over these things. Let's start with the My Weird School books. Okay. All right. Miss Daisy is crazy. Yes. Did you not like school, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did like school. I was more like Andrea uh, oh, than oh, AJ. Okay. Andrea is this uh, little goody two shoes, yeah. you know, in the series. I know. The <laughs> you were Andrea. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I never knew the answer. No. <laughs> but uh, no, I got the idea for that series when my daughter Emma was in second grade. And she was reading Junie B. Jones. Yes. And I thought there should be something like Junie B. Jones told by a boy. Oh, cool. So that's how I dreamed up My Weird School. It's about a school where all the grown-ups are insane. Yeah. Basically. And each yeah. book focuses on a different grown-up at the school. And they all have rhyming titles. Mm -hmm. Miss Daisy is crazy. And she hates to read. She hates school. She wants to see how many bonbons. Right. Doesn't know how to do any kind of mathematics. Worst teacher in the history of the world. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, kid, you said we're talking about like uh, my books are like popcorn or what were you? What potato, you? Chips. potato chips. Potato chips. Yes. These books, the kids eat these books up like like popcorn. I'm yes, telling you. they do. And it's great for like I'd say first, a second, and third graders. Even kids oh, yeah. older than that seem to enjoy them. My daughter's still reading them, and she's in seventh grade now. Oh wow! But she's my editor though. Ah, so. okay, <laughs> editor in chief. Yes, Emma. All right. Well, this whole series, you've got 21 of them, I think, don't you? Well, n actually, there's 21 books in My Weird School. Yeah. Then the kids graduate into, into third grade. Yes. And it becomes My Weird School Days. Yes. And there's five books in that series now. Okay. Is that, are you going to write more? Yes. Uh, oh, good. At least 11. And okay. And I suppose if it's still successful, the publisher will ask me to continue it. All right. Well, I read this one. I haven't read the others in this series. But yes. This was priceless. Mrs. Dole, she's the PTA president. Yes. And uh, she arranges the graduation <laughs> ceremony yes. going into third grade. And it's not just a plain old graduation ceremony. Uh -huh. She has like the Blue Angels do a flyover. <laughs> right. She has President Bill Clinton give the uh, commencement yes. speech. And there's a petting zoo and an yes. eternal flame. Yes, they like the eternal flame. Yes. Well, what happens oh is gosh. that AJ, <sighs> upon graduating, heaves his cap up in the air, <laughs> it lands on the eternal flame, right. knocks it over, sets the petting zoo on fire, yes, yes, yes. and chaos ensues. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought two things. I thought, this man needs to run a lot of people's graduations or be an event planner. I mean, he would just be fantastic. And then I thought, I, I was PTA president, by the way, well, and right. I'm deeply offended by this book. Uh, Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> the petting zoo, I like the part where you said that, um, you know, the lady says, well, our children are graduating into a world of diversity. And this petting zoo represents that diversity. <laughs> 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 I mean, you guys can see how much fun this is. These things are just crazy. The only reason I had the petting zoo, Barb, was so mm -hmm. I could have it set on fire oh. and have the animals <laughs> running <laughs> around like crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> sort of it's a mad, mad world yes, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. I always try and find oh, a way at goodness. the end for, like, you know, crazy things to happen, and uh -huh. everybody goes nuts. Yeah. And the characters <laughs> are really a lot of fun along the way. Um, is this the one where the, the teacher is pregnant is, and the kids don't know it? Yes. And she faints, and, she and the one out. says, slap her. <laughs> <laughs> no, you slap her. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do in the movies. <laughs> well, they thought, they thought she passed out from eating too many bonbons. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have you been eating too many bonbons? No. I gave them all away. 
Oh my goodness! All yes. right. She married so, the reading specialist, by the way. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. And they named their child Jackie. Jackie Mackey. Mackey? Yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, you get the idea here. There truly is something for everybody. And um, I'm going to go back to the question I started with about reluctant readers. I mean. Do you think they're different from other kids in any way? You were talking about that they need to have um, some closure. Yeah. So that, you know, but what else? I mean, your topics are so phenomenal. Barb, how, how do you define that? I hated to read when I was a kid. Okay. I, I'm sure most of the authors you've had on your show, they all, you know, from the moment they were like three or four years old, they uh -huh. loved to read. Uh -huh. They'd go to the library and read every book on right, the shelves. Right, right. I hated to read when okay. I was a kid. I thought reading was boring yeah. and hard to do. Yeah. And my mother was really worried about me. Oh. And she used to buy me comic books uh -huh. and mad magazines, <laughs> hoping it would get me interested in reading. And it didn't work. Oh. And it wasn't until I was in about like fourth grade or so that I became uh -huh. a big sports fan. Ah. And that's what got me into reading. And I figure that because I was a reluctant reader myself, I relate well to kids who are similar. Mm -hmm. And I always tell like parents and teachers, I say, you know, find the thing that your kid really loves to do. Maybe it's sports or music or mm -hmm. skateboarding mm -hmm. or extreme sports, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There's books about that topic. And if your kid sees books about that topic, he or she will get into, into them, just like I got into books from, from my sports background. And, and because I'm a I was a reluctant reader, I know what really bores those kids. You know how like some authors will go on for page after page describing what the weather looks like yes. or, or what people's faces look like? Yes. I cut all that stuff out because kids get bored by that and they forget what the weather looks like anyway. Who cares what the weather looks like? <laughs> Just get on with the story. You want action. Exactly. Yes. So that's what I do. I try and make short chapters. Um, I cut out all the fat. When I'm done with my manuscript, I go through the manuscript and try and cut out any unnecessary words hmm. and just try and really make it bare bones and mm -hmm. to the point. Mm -hmm. Well, you are so successful, and this is such a, a wonderful thing for people and for librarians, because when those kids come in, we can just go over to the G's and go, look, Gutman, go for it. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for being here. Well, thanks so much, Barb. It was really, really fun. I really appreciate you having me on the show. And thank you all so much for joining us. Come on into the library. We have a whole shelf of Gutman books in there for you. And as always, come see us at the library. Mm -hmm.